Okay, um, we have spent some time in recent videos uh, considering gamma function integral and we use them to solve different types of integral problems and we consider the basic properties of the uh, gamma type integrals. Uh, in this video we want to introduce the beta integral functions and the beta function of mn is defined with this inter with this integral here we're going from 0 to 1 on our limits and if I had beta to the m n that means I would have x raised to the m minus 1 power and then I would have 1 minus x raised to the n minus 1 power dx. Um, conversely the beta function of n m that would be x to the n minus 1 power, 1 minus x to the m minus 1 power. Now if you look at back here at our starting integral, um, if you say well let's call this u, du would be minus dx and if you fiddle around with it this integral here would change into this integral here so what it means is that beta mn is equal to beta nm. Now this definition that we have here um, sometimes you'll see it in a trig form. So we look at it, here was our starting definition and we say well let's let x be equal to the sine squared of theta. Then dx will equal 2 times the sine of theta, cosine of theta, d theta. So we go back to our integral here. If x is 0, then that theta has to be 0. If x is 1, then theta has to be pi over 2, because the sine of pi over 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So our new limits are going from 0 to pi over 2 x to the m minus 1, that's going to be the sine squared of theta going to the m minus 1, that will be 2m minus 2. Here I have 1 minus the sine squared of theta, or that's going to be the cosine squared of theta to this power, or that would be the cosine of theta to the 2n minus 2, times this, take the 2 to the outside, now I have sine theta cosine theta d theta and this then becomes this integral 2 times integral from 0 to pi over 2 multiply these two together I have the sine of theta to the 2m minus 1 power and now I have the cosine of theta to the 2n minus 1 power d theta that's a way of expressing the beta function in terms of a trig type integral. Likewise, beta of nm, that's going to be 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2, only now the sine of theta is going to be to the 2n minus 1 power instead of the 2m minus 1 power, and the cosine of theta, that's 2m minus 1 power d theta. So we're going to use all these different expressions here. We just want to get them introduced now and kind of get it out of the way. Um, another integral that we're going to encounter along the way is where you have the sine of x to a power times the cosine of x to a different power dx. And in previous integrals or previous videos, we derived some reduction formulas for this kind of an integral. And we call this, this was i, the integral of i, m, n. That is, we were integrating the sine, of, the sine of x to one power times the cosine of x to a different power, but the limits are going from 0 to pi over 2. That's this integral here, and in previous videos, we derived two different kinds of reduction formulas for this integral. Uh, one is simply m minus 1 divided by m plus n 
times the new integral of i m minus 2 n, or it could come out as n minus 1 over m plus 1, and in that case it's the i, the integral of m comma n minus 2. Um, if this is not familiar to you, you might want to go back and review those um, videos where we derive these two reduction formulas for this kind of integral here. Um, but that's it for our um, basic introduction. The next video is going to be a little bit more involved. We're going to consider a little bit more of the background of the uh, beta integral functions and also how they relate to the gamma integral function. So come back and join us for that uh, video and we're trying to establish more properties of the beta integrals.